Hello, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on the uh, time you are watching us and special EUG studio. We are going to uh, show some uh, nice guests to uh, make you the European Universities games closer to our viewers. And first guest is Matthias Pechownik, the EUSA European University Sport Association General Secretary. Hello, Matthias. Hello. Your first impression about the games, because uh, we have a few days of um, disciplines. Uh, how do you feel about it? I feel very good because uh, knowing through what we had to go in the preparation of the games and what we are seeing in, in, right now, uh, it is over my expectation before the games. The first games, as I remember, there were only 10 disciplines. Now in Łódź we have 20 disciplines. How does it uh, evaluate it? Uh, well, uh, we started in 12, uh, 12, 2012 in uh, Cordoba, Spain. You know, when you start, you are always a little bit more cautious. So we started with 10, but now with development of ELSA, with development of our program with 20, uh, if we have a good organizers and we have here in, in Poland, in Łódź, uh, we are able to do the games for with 20 sports. But when you started with the games, what was the main idea of, of them? The main idea was to bring the students who previously competed in European University Championships, which were held in different cities around Europe, to give them a chance to be all together at one place at the same time. Mm -hmm. we, we see that there's uh, lots of things to, to organize. Once we see the venues, the catering, the sleeping zone, the chilling zone, the events. This is a very big event, uh, not only as, as, as a sport, and it's also an idea of them. Yes, it is. And it is not only a sport event, because you must not forget that we have here also a lot of uh, educational activities. We had uh, seminars, conferences that are going at the same time. We had a, a very rich social program. So ELSA Games is not just sport event. It is much more than that. And I believe that that's why we are unique. And that's why students decide to come in such big numbers to, to our events every year and year. So let's say, what are the events not connected to sport? For example, uh, when, when the games, the time of the games is, well, is coming? Uh, almost every day we have uh, some educational event. We had uh, observer program for the next organizers. We had a conference on dual career. We have some other educational activities. Uh, then we have social program. You see that students who come from all over Europe, this is not just that they come, compete and then go. So we are trying to make them uh, to create possibilities to meet each other, to interact, to get new friends, to know the culture of the city and so on. So uh, that's what makes us a unique event. We are after a few days of uh, games. Uh, do you have your favorite venue, for example? Because uh, there is 14 venues during the games. Yes. So uh, as I'm a tennis player and my sons both train tennis, uh, I like to watch tennis a lot. But I'm impressed here with uh, also other sports and events. Yesterday I watched the three on three finals in, in basketball. Superb event with uh, uh, full uh, tribunes of spectators. I saw beach volleyball, also very nice. Then we have here in Zatoka Sport a very nice venue for, for water polo and later on swimming, uh, futsal, football. So uh, even if you are, uh, you have one favorite sport, you cannot uh, resist to watch and cheer the, the students on the other sport disciplines. Mm -hmm. I had uh, also some uh, emotions, impressions about the opening ceremony, because uh, I heard that this, it was first time in Łódź, it first time in Atlas Arena, something like this happened. There were matches of world uh, championships, European championships, but this kind of ceremony never had place. So how, the, how did that uh, affect uh, on you, that, yeah. the impression w about it? Well, when we prepared the event, we are aware that the opening ceremony is one thing that creates a lot of stress for the organizers in preparation of the protocol and everything. And I have personally attended more than 20 uni World University Games and the opening ceremonies and our games and championships. So I know how complex project this is. And I can say that uh, I am more than happy to see how the organizing committee managed to do the opening ceremony. We had a superb match pass without any delays. We had a, a good uh, cultural program, super music. So I, I believe that uh, everybody 
enjoy it very much. Mm, I see that uh, every time we have the ceremony, there is a part for also the, the official part, uh, the protocol, yeah. But also there is an uh, occasion to to show the the city and the and the country that the game is playing. There also is good way to to show to the athletes, to the coaches, to the staff, all of the staff where where they are. Yeah, I, I believe that this is the 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 message that should be and is normally given at the opening ceremony that the city uh, or the university or the country presents itself to the participants that are coming from all over, or all over the Europe. And I believe that uh, the goal and the aim of the organizing committee here at the opening ceremony was uh, reached because, as I said before, there was music and behind people could see what Poland is, what beauties uh, this country has and also then what university is doing and the city and so on. So it was a perfect combination of uh, art, music uh, and everybody that I spoke uh, with enjoyed very much the opening ceremony. The previous games were in Coimbra four years ago because we had the COVID break, let's say. There were also some, let's say, situation that we weren't sure if the games in Łódź will will go uh, without any problems. But also from your side, probably there was there something to, Let's say you were not sure if the, everything will, will work well because there were no games in Belgrade, for example. Yeah, so we had a very crazy period in the last three years. Uh, we were preparing Belgrade games, supposed to be the biggest ever event. We also had 22 sports planned. Uh, and then in 2020, three months before the event, COVID came and we had to postpone the games for one year. And then we were sure that we will do it in 21 and again we couldn't do it so then belgrade asked to do it in 20 this year in mm -hmm. 2020 uh but we already started with preparation of the games here in luch and uh, also here we had COVID winter mm -hmm. and after uh, COVID, we thought that it's gone came the war in neighboring country ukraine so we had a lot of challenges and as i said on the beginning and i will repeat over and over we are more than happy with the organization taking into consideration all of the challenges we had and the number of people that we are having here almost 5000 uh, students that are participating on the games has is much over our expectations uh, taking to, into consideration the time that we are living in one of the biggest challenge, I think, was to to create good atmosphere for the Ukrainian students. That the, they were welcomed very warmly during the opening ceremony. Uh, there is also over, as I remember, three hundred uh, students of Ukraine. There is one of the biggest team coming here. That was the challenge. Yes, and I'm also very proud on the work that uh, Elsa and the organizing committee uh, has been doing so far to enable the. Ukrainian students to come to the games. You know that we created Solidarity Fund for the students and universities from Ukraine. We collected uh, with support of our member federation enough funds so that these students could participate without any costs on these games. And the, the number of 300 is, uh, is spectacular. I, I would say in these circumstances uh, to have here the possibility that 300 students from Ukraine can come and join and be together with other students. This is uh, a great success of the organizing committee and, and NEVSA. As I hear, the organizing committee has put a high level of the games of organization. So when we have next games in the two or three year, or four years, that will be difficult to, to reach the yes, level. Yes, and we have observer program here. So we have the next organizers from Hungary and then in 26 from Italy here. They were with us for five days. We went around and I saw that they have some <laughs> <laughs> worried faces and I asked them why and they say, well, we will have to work very hard to reach the level that uh, Vuch is presenting here for the participants of the games. So the final question is uh, how do EUSA games can develop because every every next edition can, can bring something more. What is possible to, to do? Well, ELSA games are not uh, a standardized event, so we are trying to to create possibilities according to the possibilities of each city or, or the country. So if we have a big city, then we can go on big number of sports, but sometimes there is a smaller city, so we try to choose 
uh, correct number of sports that everybody has uh, possibility to be accommodated and to compete in 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 high level standard uh, venues. Uh, there is still some space for development in terms of promotion of the games. You know that student sport uh, is not so popular as, as the professional sports. But uh, as I said, EUSA Games is a unique event. Uh, every time we learn something new, we create something new. And this is also something that uh, makes us passionate to, to carry on, to carry on, because uh, we are always trying to invent new possibilities for students and a new experience for the students. So thank you very much for this uh, few minutes of uh, of interview. Matthias Pechovnik, the EUSA General Secretary, was our guest in our special studio. Join us, join us next time. See you soon. Thank you.